everyone, and welcome back to a brand new episode of Virtual Coffee. My name is Alexa Collier, and on this podcast, we chat with small and local business owners from around the world. Now with me today is Eden, the author of Arnie the Armadillo Goes to Antarctica. On this episode, Eden shares her journey of becoming a published author and her advice on self-publishing. Arnie the Armadillo can now be purchased on Amazon, and I'll definitely put the link in the description of this episode. So be sure to check out Eden and Arnie, and happy listening. I know you'll enjoy this episode. Now, before we get into it, as always, I'd appreciate if you could follow Virtual Coffee on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, all the social medias, as well as rating us on Spotify and Apple Podcasts. That all just helps others discover our episodes and hence bring support to the small business owners that we feature. Thank you so much for tuning back in. Now let's jump into it and hear from Eden. Welcome, Eden. Thank you so much for being on Virtual Coffee. Thank you for having me. Definitely. So I'm really excited to have you on because I've never had an author on the podcast. So this is a newer newer type of episode, which is very exciting. Uh, so to kick things off, would be happy for you to just give a brief intro of yourself um, and then we'll kind of get into the book and go from there. But would yeah. love for you to introduce yourself first. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so yeah, my name is Eden Esterbrook. Um, I am a self-published author. Well, I will be as of November 1st. That is when um, my book goes live on Amazon. But uh, for all intents and purposes, I'm an author. And I, um, it is not my full-time job. I'm not a starving artist. I actually work full-time in the manufacturing industry. So I do um, digital content marketing and I've focused on the manufacturing industry my entire career. So it's a little bit of a jump when you think about going from manufacturing to children's literature. Um, Mm -hmm. I do both currently, but, and really, I mean, I love the manufacturing industry, so I'm not planning to leave, but very excited to uh, expand my uh, repertoire into the, the children's literature space. Were you always interested in writing a children's book? Like, was this always a long time dream of yours? Has it recent, like, how has that come about when you're like, hey, I, I want to do this. I want to write a children's book. Yeah, so that's actually really interesting. So um, I decided at age 14 that I wanted to be a writer. It was I was not good at math. I was not good at science. So I was like, you know what? I, I love to write. We're going to go in that direction. So I said at 14, that's when I decided that's the path I'm going to take. Uh, once you decide that, you have to think, okay, how do you want to write? The kind of the thought process I went through was I need to find a way to be able to make money. Uh, so I pursued professional writing uh, as a mm-hmm. career. That's how I landed in digital marketing um, and then uh, specifically ended up in the manufacturing industry, which I love. But uh, despite the fact I went into business writing or professional writing, whenever you go into the writing profession as a whole, it's always a goal to um, you know, have have published work. Um, And just Mm kind of due to the trajectory of my career, I kind of always assumed it was going to be adult literature. (laughs) You know, I never really dabbled too much in the children's space. And it really wasn't until recently, and this was after, you know, I'd kind of, I'd come up with so many different concepts for adult books. And, you know, as a writer, you know, if something doesn't really land, you're just like, you think of an idea and you're like, well, that could work. And you just don't feel write about it. It's a very feelings based (laughs) sort of Mm -hmm. decision making process. And as soon as I came up with Arnie the Armadillo, it felt right. (laughs) And I was like, okay, I think I need to actually act on this one versus a lot of the ideas before that kind of went in the trash. And that's kind of how I got there was just knowing that I wanted to do it eventually, but not knowing how or in what way. And then here we are. That's really inspiring just to hear, you know, you had this idea, you had this dream and you never gave up on it, right? Maybe it didn't manifest the way you originally thought it would, but here you are and it's happening now. Any, and we'll get to Arnie in a second specifically, but do you have any advice off the top of your head of anything in particular that helped you not give up or like, how'd you just keep coming back to like, yeah, let me, you know, dabble in this concept or maybe this is the book. Was it just something that always brought you joy? I don't know, because I could totally understand if along the way you're like, eh, I'm not going to do this. You know, I'm going to focus on something else. Right. 
Yeah, no, I mean, so, you know, I, I believe uh, children are children are a gift. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, at the at the moment, I, I don't have children. Um, okay. And that's something that I've, you know, wrestled with a lot, because I do believe they are, you know, they're our next generation. And there was a part of me that really wanted to do something for the next generation, seeing as currently, I'm not <laughs> a parent or mm-hmm. being able to raise some. And so that's kind of what eventually started pushing me into the children's lit space, because I mean, I loved stories. Um, you know, I've always loved books. You know, the dedication in my current book is to my parents, thanking them for reading me Dr. Seuss, mm-hmm. my favorite mm-hmm. children's literature author. Like they would they sacrificed uh their tons, ton twisters <laughs> 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 to read me, to read to me as a child, to take me to the library and to, you know, to bring, you know, stories into my life that have eventually brought me to where I am today. It's just kind of I was just say, just kind of happened. As far as any advice, I think mm-hmm. you just have to be okay with ideas not working. I think I, I think I told you I had several ideas that I'd bounced around earlier um, in the adult space that I kind of started with and went through the outline phase, and it just nothing. It just didn't feel right, and I just kind of scrapped it. It's always it's never something you want to do, you know, especially when you're when you're doing an an art form, which I do believe writing is an art form. You always want it to you want you want it to work. You want the time that you invested in something to work. You know, I want my children's book to work. But, you know, reality is it may not. Who knows? But not letting that get you down and continuing to push forward and looking at things from different angles to eventually find that clear path. I think that makes sense. And I think there's something different about you had concepts that, you know, like you said, Mm -hmm. working, you scrapped them. But you kept going versus I think folks can also get into a situation where they're having these ideas and they're not working and you just yeah. have the thing of like, mm, maybe this isn't for me. And it's important to recognize that difference, right? Of when yeah. when it fuels you and it's still not working, but it's still fueling you. Yeah, keep going, right? That's worth yeah. it versus knowing sometimes things, you know, are supposed to be put on the shelf or, you know, maybe come back to it a later time or maybe never. And that's okay, too. Yeah, uh, it's all about finding what what really fuels you and brings you passion. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, and I said I really didn't think that I would end up in the children's literature space. Right. Like, I mean, literally, I have a profession, I have a business, I have a business writing degree, and I studied. My minor was medieval studies. Like we've gone almost to the <laughs> opposite side of things <laughs> um, from where I started in my career. But here we are, and it felt and it feels right. Like yeah. it really does. That's lovely to hear. And let's uh let's dive into Arnie a bit. I'd love for you know you to tell us anything you want about him. Give us the. Yeah. The kind of teaser for the book. So for those listening, they they know who who Arnie is and, and what his book is about. Absolutely. Well, uh, it is Arnie the Armadillo. So the full title of the book is Arnie the Armadillo goes to Antarctica. Uh, right off the bat, you might sense a theme uh, in that the letter A is very prevalent and that theme carries throughout the book. So the concept for the idea uh, was really stemmed from A lot of the research shows that within the first three years of life, uh, that's one of the most intensive period for acquiring speech and language skills. Um, And I think everybody can agree that speech and language skills are incredibly important to develop and doing so at a young age should be encouraged. So what I've done is created a story that will incorporate a lot of different A words in the form of a fun adventure. So uh, the way that I like to put on the back of the book is you're kind of adventuring through the letter A with Arnie. But mm-hmm. it's not designed to be an educational book per se, like there is that aspect, but it's ultimately just it should be just be a story that will expose your child to different sounds, maybe different ways the letter A sounds, or and even some words that people might argue are too complex for younger ears. But getting them familiar with that sound and when paired with the really awesome illustrations, my illustrator did a fantastic job, I think will really capture their attention. Even if they're not fully certain what maybe some of those more complicated words are, there's visuals to pair with it. So hopefully, you know, maybe later down the road that will stick with them. So sweet. I love I love the concept. Are there plans of continuing with the rest of the alphabet? 
there is, depending nice. on how A goes, you know? Sure, um, sure. I, um, <laughs> Let's start with A. Self, seeing with, seeing I'm, as I'm self-published, I'm admittedly, I'm, I'm self-financed right now. Sure. So yeah. I feel really confident in the concept. I've, you know, gone through, I did a I did a focus group ahead of time and the concept oh, nice. seems to be validated by by parents. Um, and the research also validates the concept of children can learn and they don't have to learn like baby words either. They can un- they can uh, comprehend some of those larger words and that can help shape them for the future. So I would love to make more of the alphabet. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we'll we'll see how how Arnie goes. And um, <laughs> you know, maybe he'll start doing something else and for the yeah. letter. <laughs> fair. Fair enough. Fair enough. I love that. I yeah, you definitely set yourself up there for a good uh mm-hmm. good continuation of his yes. adventures. That's lovely. And it sounds like, you know, as you're speaking about the book and just kind of your process through it. There's such a huge business side of self-publishing. And I think, you know, when folks <laughs> folks listen, they're like, yeah, you know, okay, you write the book, maybe you partner with an illustrator, great. But there's so much more behind that. And I'm more interested in maybe what are some of the things on the business side that surprised you or you didn't expect or maybe were harder than you thought? Mm-hmm. Um, just curious about your reflections. Clearly, you're passionate about the writing process, but yeah. what pieces of the business process stand out? everything um i <laughs> tell i tell everybody like i'm an english major through and through i did not study business i don't do numbers very well um i've had to do things from trying to figure out even just how to set up like a, a dba or you know a doing business as uh for arnie you know so that i can connect it to a bank account so i can connect that to you know when i do sales and then you know i'm not even thinking about taxes and i don't even know what i'm doing then <laughs> Um, there are pretty much any aspect that involves that doesn't involve the actual promotion of (laughs) uh, has been a very big learning process Um, and I'm very thankful for my network I've reached out to several people in it who have helped provide some you know insights and um, different resources to help try to you know think through some of those problems I think my career, I said I work in manufacturing, I worked with a lot of engineers, but I'm not an engineer. And so one thing you learn how to do in that situation is you learn how to be resourceful because you have to ultimately Mm -hmm. do something you're not super familiar with. Um, And I think that's really come in handy here because I pretty much everything outside of the um, actual writing and even to an extent, the promotion, like people think, oh, you work in marketing. The promotion part should be simple. Yes, but I spent my entire career in B2B marketing, which is vastly different right. than, yep. you know, B2C marketing, which is what a book would be. And I'm like, there's still a learning curve there. Like, I have no clue what I'm doing. I'm just, you know, doing the whole, you know, fake it till you make it, you know, just yeah. be real. Like, I, I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> <laughs> no, no one does, right? I mean, that's that's life in and of itself. No one knows what they're doing. <laughs> I can imagine all the pieces that, or I, rather, I can't imagine all the pieces that go behind self-publishing. And it, it sounds like you really approached it as calm as possible, right? Kind of taking it step by step, day mm-hmm. by day, which is, that's advice we hear often on this podcast is yeah. you can't get lost in the whole list, you kind of have to take it step by step, right? And just yeah. cross off those things as you get there. You may have mentioned this, but about how long has it been since you kind of came up with the concept of Arnie to now? I would say I think I wrote down the initial draft of Arnie on a notepad like earlier this year. Okay, okay. Um. Yeah, and then I kind of thought, thought through it for a while. I kind of left it for a little while and then was kind of like, you know, maybe this could work. And I revisited it. Then I started talking to um, a friend who is an illustrator. And kind of after that, we just said, let's go for it. So Mm -hmm. yeah, it's, it happened fairly quickly this year, but you know, kind of when you know, and you feel like it's the the right step forward, Mm -hmm. I'm kind of a very much like, let's just, let's just go before I change my mind. (laughs) Right. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. And it also when, when it's right, the steps will kind of progress, right? Like it'll, it'll happen, you know, it'll, it'll yeah. keep, keep going. The momentum will stay because you're passionate about it and you have that feeling that it's right. So you'll keep, keep going for it. Okay. Yeah. That's, I mean, that's definitely a long time for sure, but I wasn't sure if it was, you know, 
over two years, under a year. Um, so that's that's good to know. Yeah, no, I mean, children's literature is a little bit, well, at least in my opinion, it can be a quicker turnaround because mm. like, the, the books aren't nearly as long as like an adult literature, sure. which would be like, you know, hundreds of pages with a lot of texts. Like children's book is a, is a very, it's shorter as it is, and it's, and it's also mostly picture. So mm -hmm. there's a little bit easier turnaround uh, sure. from the writing side of things, at least. That's a good point. No, that definitely makes sense. And how was it balancing, you know, clearly you still have a full-time job with mm. this other job, this passion, writing the book. Because I, I often find, even speaking for myself with the podcast, I also have a full-time job. That's the hardest mm -hmm. part, right? You come home after the long work day and sometimes you don't want to do more work, right? Because even though you're super passionate about it, there is yeah. still very much work involved. Any advice there or stories to share about how you just kept going and, and tried not to burn yourself out? Yeah, I think um, prioritizing rest. So typically I set aside my Sunday to do nothing work related. Um, there are exceptions to that, um, but it's kind of my goal. And if I can't do that on a Sunday, then I'll re kind of reallocate that rest time to another period. That might be easier for someone like me. I am I am single. I have no kids, so my my schedule is a little bit easier to you know make those rearrangements. But I really do try to have that one day where I don't have to think about work or any of the side hustles. You know, if an email comes through and it's like really important, I'll respond to it. But otherwise, I try to tell myself it can wait till Monday. For the evenings, you know, it's I try to be efficient with time so sitting down and just making it getting what I need to done and then spending the rest of the time you know resting watching tv you know whatever it is to just decompress the balance is hard and honestly adding in the adding in Arnie and learning to balance that with my full-time job has probably been one of the biggest learning experiences uh, with this whole venture I'm a very task oriented individual. So in my head, if there's a task to be done, I, I feel like I have to get it done as soon as humanly possible, mm -hmm. which is why doing something like uh, having a whole rest day is very challenging for me. Because yeah. if I see an email something, I'm like, I must respond to it like right now. And I'm like, no, it's okay. Like they're going to be there tomorrow. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, you know, take the rest, go hang out with family, like, you know, put the phone away or, you know, at least mute the notifications and then come back to it at another day. So still a learning process, but I have found that that intentional rest time has made a very big difference for me. Good for you for discovering what, what works for you. And like I said, I feel like that's, it has to be one of the hardest things for mm -hmm. anyone who has that side business, that side yeah. passion, because you want to put all your energy towards that, but you have another full-time job that also requires mm -hmm. a lot of energy. So yep. I'm always curious what folks are doing to try to help balance that out as best as possible. And yeah, I think that intentional rest day makes sense. I can definitely relate to uh, wanting to get the task done and you have an unread yep. message. It's like, I want to get to that <laughs> now. You know, yeah, yep. that makes sense. <laughs> um, <just> no problem. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But it, you know, it's also a pro though, right? There's pros and cons to every, everything like that. <laughs> it, it does. It yeah. Does. And it's very handy Monday through Saturday. Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, um, logistically, where are you going to be able to ship Arnie the Armadillo once uh, he's published? Mm -hmm. So I'm self-published through Amazon KDP, which means anybody who can access Amazon can access Arnie. Nice. Um, how exactly that works out? I don't know. We'll find out November 1st. But, um, <laughs> it should be as simple as, you know, any other Amazon order that you do. So, yeah, it's a, through Amazon. Nice. Excellent. And how was the self-publishing process? Was that more or less difficult than you thought walking into it. Um, I honestly know very little about it. I'm just curious how that journey was. You know, it, it was definitely interesting going into it with self-publishing, especially with Amazon. I kind of had to have an honest conversation with myself about like profits. I really wanted Arnie to be accessible to as many people as possible. So I went to the lowest possible price point that I could at $9.99. And with that, Amazon does take a decent percentage mm -hmm. of what you earn as well as print costs. So, you know, kind of figuring out like, okay, what is what the 
the numbers behind it. I know we've talked a lot about numbers. I'm not good with them. So, you know, what are our print costs? What is, you know, what is Amazon going to take? You know, what does that mean as far as like, ultimately my goal is to try to earn enough from Arnie to make a B and a C at least, you know, doing mm-hmm. the trilogy. So that kind of, that side of things was challenging to maneuver and the, and um amazon is also very picky about how you format your book so my illustrator and i had a really fun time figuring that Ooh, one out but she did it <laughs> yeah that's interesting see it's all those like little mm. little things like that you know that you just as someone just listening to this episode or someone who's never been in that world before like you just wouldn't yeah. think of that right you don't no yeah yeah. Um, and we figured it out along the way. Like, I think right. I got my first book file from her. We uploaded it and they're like, I'm sorry, there's all these errors. And I'm like, what do you mean there are errors? <laughs> and then we had to figure out, okay, what are the errors? And Amazon is not super clear about what their problems are <laughs> and how to fix them. So there was some some troubleshooting on our side and we did eventually figure it out. Um, that's kind of why I didn't I didn't actually announce any sort of like publication date until Mm. it was approved in Amazon because I was not sure, you know, what was going to, you know, what Amazon was going to find problems Mm -hmm. with. And I wanted to have any of that ironed out before I told somebody that a book was going to go live. (laughs) For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like the the smart thing to do there. (laughs) No, that's so, it's so exciting though, to have come in a couple of days, you'll be able to say like, you're, you're a published author. That's so exciting. exciting. It's just inspiring hearing, you know, your story and how you got here to, to Arnie in the book. And I, I really hope you're able to do more because I think it's a really cute concept. And the best part about this whole process that you're sharing is now you'll know for next time, right? Yes. It should be get more and more efficient, more and more easier as you go along. Um, Cause you really only have to learn the lesson once to, to know it. Yes. That is the hope is that um, now with the foundation set, if I do get to do B and C then, or even beyond that, but you know, Mm -hmm. my short term goal would be A, B and C. (laughs) Right. Sure. Um, Then at least 90% of that foundation is now in place, Yeah. yeah. you know, to just add on versus having to start from, you know, the ground up. For sure. And I know you've been sharing a ton of advice and perspectives throughout this, but any, advice in particular that comes to mind for folks wanting to write a book fellow aspiring authors out there if you kind of had to say one thing to them what would it be share your work with other people um Mm -hmm. i think you know put down your first draft and then don't be afraid to share it um and i always say that because writing is there is a level of biasness when you read your own work you're like oh this is amazing i'm fantastic i'm so talented and then you send it to other people and they provide perspectives on it that really can help you shape that initial draft into something that's just even even better um i know arnie has gone through five people and it's only like 20 pages Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you know don't write in a bubble um it's really important to get those alternative perspectives, especially if it's on something you're unfamiliar with. In my case, I kind of felt like I had to share it with parents just because I'm not a parent. Um, So making sure I got, you know, their perspective on things and kind of fact checked um, kind of the concept and how they would apply it and kind of getting that understanding. Um, So that would be my advice is write it down and then don't stare at it by yourself, you know, share it with friends. And those friends don't have to be writers. I definitely think that it helps if you know people that do write professionally because I think they're really good at reviewing stuff objectively because ultimately writing because it is so subjective there probably are going to be people that just don't like the book and being okay with that so that would be kind of my initial advice for someone wanting to to write a book and I think that advice even applies to any like deliverable product, like anything that someone's creating, um, mm-hmm. it's just getting feedback, not because that can be scary, right? I understand yeah. how it's scary to put what you think is unfinished, quote unquote, unfinished in front of someone. But yeah. if you have the right people, you know, to check and really what you're speaking to is getting customer feedback um, and experimenting yes. before yeah. going going live. And that's always, always smart because <laughs> um, yes. you're, you know, as we all know, like you're one person and mm-hmm. anything you mm-hmm. and you meaning anyone, any anything you create, you know, you need that feedback. You need that other input. So, yeah, yeah. I think that's that's really great advice. Oh, absolutely. I think Arnie got reviewed as a draft. So like just as a word doc and then mm-hmm. he got reviewed again with um sketch illustrations and then 
reviewed again as a fully colorized illustration. Right. So that's yeah. three rounds of reviews by, I think the first round was like three people who reviewed the word doc. I just had writers review that one. And then okay. the illustration or the pre-colorized illustrated version, that was all my parents. And that was like seven or eight people. Mm -hmm. And then five people at the end with the, with the final colorized illustration. So there was a lot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. No, but I'm sure he, he got better and better each, each go around yeah. each review. No, that's Absolutely. Wonderful. And it, it, I recognize it's tough as a writer to mm -hmm. have your work criticized as you're kind of like, you know, you're like, oh, what? But I really liked that. Like, right. I, I argued. My dad was one of the people that uh, that reviewed it. And I kind of argued with him a little bit. I'm like, no, I I did this on purpose. And he's like, well, you might want to rethink it. And I'm mm -hmm. like, fine. <laughs> mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting balance to find with feedback of listening, accepting, but also at the end of the day, you could have decided, no, I'm gonna go with what I originally yeah. thought because that reviewer is also only one person, right? So it's yeah. like this tricky, like separating emotions out of it, but then also being confident enough in certain pieces, flexible in others. It's it's hard. Yeah. It's a hard it, thing it, to it's navigate. It's challenging. The, yeah. um, the second round of reviews it was where we had the most feedback we had like I said eight or nine different people and some of them were very, some of them were conflicting like one person liked that like right. ads, another person didn't like ads and yeah. I'm like well I guess I'm just trying to make an executive decision I like it I'm mm -hmm. keeping it <laughs> right <laughs> and it's tricky because it's like how do you know you know in that situation like mm -hmm. who's right and so it's kind of at sometimes you just have to go with your gut and see what happens yeah yeah, yeah that's, that's interesting. Why, like even though it sounds really like I don't want to say kind of like a downer, but you have to be okay with the fact that there are going to be people that read this book and are not going to like it. It's it's yep. just the way that it is. I'm not going to be able to create a book that every single person in the United States likes no. to read. Right. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, you know, coming to grips with that ahead of time, you know, because once he comes onto the market, like there are probably going to be people who leave two star reviews, one star review, three star mm -hmm. reviews, but hopefully there are more people that do five and that we just have to be okay with not letting those two star reviews distract from the fives. Definitely. And I mean, writing a book is that's art and art is so subjective, right? Mm -hmm. Like everyone has different tastes and that's what yeah. you're speaking to. And that that's okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's funny that books do have reviews like that online because yeah it's like, it's truly just someone's opinion. It's not, it it's never like, oh, this book was broken, you know, like a product right. might be or something. <laughs> yeah. It is kind of funny that they, they do that, that exists just like any other product. Yeah, no, it, it is very interesting. I think, I think what the uh, world would be unified on is that Arnie the Armadillo is absolutely adorable. I've not, yes. met, anybody that, <laughs> I've not met anybody that's seen a picture of him and said that he's ugly. So that's, I think that's we'll really, all be able to agree on Yes, that. that is true. We'll take that. So if people are writing bad reviews, they should just up their rating just on that fact alone. You know, at least, at least he's adorable. <laughs> He's adorable. Uh, yeah, that's so funny. <laughs> that's awesome. Uh, well, Eden, the uh, the last big question I end every episode with is, in this moment, what is your proudest accomplishment? Maybe it's Arnie. Maybe it's something completely different. Just that first thing that pops into your mind right now, what is your proudest accomplishment? You know, one thing that I had always struggled with is finding the the best use for my my excess time, um, especially being in a situation where I am currently single, I don't have any children, so my time is very much my own. And what a few weeks ago, somebody sent me a message and said that, you know, hey, I signed up for this volunteer opportunity because I saw that you were spending your time helping other people and it really inspired me. And that just in that moment, that was just something that I really need. And I felt extremely proud of because I've not really ever felt like I'd made much of an impact on people and to have somebody take the time to reach out and essentially tell me that my time was not wasted. I was extremely proud of that. Um, and that is probably the first thing that comes to my mind that happened fairly recently. So, yeah, that's, that's lovely. And thank you for sharing that. 
And thank you for sharing your story. It's a really beautiful story. And I know your impact on others is only going to grow from here as, as you continue down that, that passion. Um, and thank you so much for being, being on the podcast. Like I said, sharing your story, perspectives, advice, and by the time this comes out, Arnie should be out. So please let us know where we can find him, Instagram, Facebook, your website, Amazon, every, just shout everything out where we can find Arnie and yourself. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, I would I would highly uh, encourage everybody to go straight to Instagram at Arnie the Armadillo. That's where all of my updates go. For anybody who's local to the Concord or Charlotte, North Carolina area, that'll also be where I'll post if I'm going to be at any pop-up events. Um, and I also have a website that's meetarnie.com, uh, as you can also email me at uh, meetarnie at gmail.com. But my Instagram is really the main hub, so I would highly recommend and hopping over there and following for all armadillo related activities <laughs> lovely well i hope everyone checks out eden and arnie and purchases the book and thank you so much eden again for being on virtual coffee we really appreciate it yeah thank you for having me 